Previously, I had shared a practical and hands-on lab environment for doing some penetration testing. It was breaking into an Active Directory environment with this tool called NetExec. It is name your price training, so if you'd like access to the content and the material itself, you can get that at literally whatever dollar amount you want, like zero dollars completely for free. But if you use some of the online virtual machines, like the cloud lab environment you spin up, that is pay as you go as you use different virtual machines, but it's like 50 cents. That did come with a showcase and video demonstration, so if you haven't seen that video before, feel free to check it out. But this video is not strictly about NetExec. I figured at the very least that did offer us a sandbox to do some penetration testing. So what we might do next is write a penetration testing report. And we can crank out a formal, fully fledged and professional pen test report super easily. In this video, I'll do that with PlexDrag. Now, let me say straight up, this is a fully featured and dedicated video for our sponsor, PlexTrack. But seriously, honestly, I love their stuff. I think they have an incredible platform that helps you collaborate with your teams to help prepare and rapidly and efficiently push out the deliverables for penetration testing. So if I may, I'd love to showcase using the PlexTrack platform and just how fast and easy we can create our own pen test report. So here I am, I've logged into the dashboard of PlexTrack and they say, hello, John, welcome to PlexTrack. You can find your assignments, maybe any other tasks or work that you might be assigned, given to do here, alongside, hey, your team, given your role inside of PlexTrack and maybe your own operating conditions. Maybe you're still validating some vulnerabilities, maybe you're putting together or drafting up a report, and up at the top here, you can see the recently viewed reports. Maybe what you've been working on, hey, maybe things still in draft, maybe something ready for review, or maybe something that's already out and published and in the hands of the client, maybe your partner. And speaking of your clients and partners, look, maybe that is where we can get started, and this ultimately is, look, the listing of the companies that you work with, the organization organizations that you're providing pen tests for. You could add these in here given their name, maybe a point of contact, their email, a description, and then you could scroll around to see, look, are there any other tags or actions that you might be able to do or take here? So you could build out a report for any of them or see what reports they already have, and even some of the findings or vulnerabilities that have been opened or closed or see their status change over time. Because that's one of the most important things, right? Is being able to know, hey, we've performed this pen test for you. Now, hopefully we're seeing changes. Hey, critical vulnerabilities resolved, high, medium things remediated and fixed, and they aren't a problem in the future. Back up at the top here, obviously you could modify the client's information, maybe tweak their logo, point of contact, description, anything that you might like to add in here. But some of the other tabs are where there's a lot of really cool stuff. You could see the pen test reports that are associated with them. Hey, things you've done previously. These can be tied to to different engagements, hey, maybe timelines, things on the schedule and the calendar as to what is happening when, and I'll show you more of that in a little bit, and we'll dive into some of these reports. But the findings here are really cool to be able to see that across all of your clients, each individual company or organization that you might work with. On top of that, hey, you can track all of their assets. Look, whether that's IP addresses, whether that workstations, whether that's servers, other devices, other endpoints, things that are pertinent to the tests that you perform. And I didn't do a good job showcasing some of these statistics earlier. I think these are awesome, again, just for the visual to showcase, I don't know, bring to leadership, see everything that you've been up to. And maybe there's still some work left to do. And that is where the priorities come in. And this is new, this is super cool. It's a new feature to PlexTrack, but it is something that they're super excited about and I am too, because it helps you really prioritize what's important and what's valuable and what work still needs to be done, like evaluating or validating one other vulnerability or critical finding. I'll show you more about that later, but I did just want to drill down into all the sweet stuff that you could see with a given client. But ultimately, we should just create our own client for NetExec, that pen test that we wanted to write a simple report for. We could just cruise through this, it's super easy. Let me do NetExec. Things like the contact details, the email, description, and logo are all optional. You can, of course, add tags, anything more specific to what you're up to, or custom fields, things that you just want to associate with one new client or company. We can go ahead and submit this to create that. And now, now that that is added in our queue of companies, clients, organizations that we work with, let's say that there was on the schedule an engagement, a penetration testing, actual operation, an assessment that you had on the calendar. 
this is really cool just to kind of keep your head straight. Let's say, hey, we know that this team is doing this op this time, whenever, where, and you could actually view this with any filters you might like. Hey, what's coming up? What's scheduled? What's pending? What's in progress? What's in review and it's complete. You've got the calendar grid view here along with the list and just seeing, hey, when you or other operators are even available to take on that new assessment. But let me go ahead and add in our calendar, hey, a new pen test that, I don't know, maybe just happened when, let's see, when did that video release? It was way back in like, April, wasn't it? Doesn't matter too much. Let's just go ahead and create a new engagement here and we can say net exec pen test engage. Select a client. This will auto fill. Obviously, as I'm typing, you can choose from any of these in the drop down. Net exec is fine. We say, when are we testing? Well, we did this Monday through Friday, business hours, type of test, and anything that we might want to add and say that we are doing for this test. Active directory evaluation. We've got an objective that's optional, a scope. We can just say domain. And this is all just scrappy notes. Again, for me to showcase, hey, this is all possible for you. You could upload any other pertinent files. Name the report, net exec 20. 24 pen test report. And of course you can toggle the status into anything that you feel is appropriate here. This is still in the works, so we'll call that a draft. You could choose a template from any others that you might have already created and you're building these out as you keep using the platform. Same thing with other findings. Hey, maybe a default or maybe something specific to a web app or anything that you might use for mobile security, anything. We can tag in different reviewers, myself, Victoria, and tags as you saw previously. I'm good to continue here. We can assign operators, let's just say it was me and we'll choose those dates. Yep, we'll put it to that. If anything, that's just nice and convenient. Go ahead and hit save. Perfect, now we've got that scheduled and we can see the report already being put together for us. I think that's a good idea. Hey, start building out your report as you're going through things. And by the way, I don't wanna, hey, harp on this too much, but the assessments category is really cool. These aren't for like, oh, the actual pen test itself, but they are to prepare for the pen test, for the operation, for the engagement. Let's say you had a handful of, oh, pre-engagement questions or surveys or CIS control stuff that you need to have ironed out, assign these to different clients or organizations and then try to get whatever details you might need to actually keep cruising through the job. You can obviously create your own and customize these with any sort of question and answer, field, format, form that you would like. Hey, maybe input boxes, maybe radio checklists or multi drop down, select and search. It's all very cool stuff. The way that you build these, by the way, is super easy. You can head on over to the questionnaire templates tab. You can go ahead and import any style that you might like or review anything previously and even build out a new questionnaire with whatever title you want and use a reference framework here. So if you're working with NIST or ISO 27001 or any of these, that is pretty sweet. Oh, they have CMMC in here. Nice. All right. I don't mean to get any more distracted than I already am. Let's hop on over to the reports section in the left-hand side navigation. And these are are your pen test reports, right? Hey, here's a listing of all of the client's names, the report title, the status, hey, whether or not it's still in draft, you're working on it, if it's published, if it's ready for review, and the total number of current findings. We can keep scrolling on this to be able to evaluate, edit things, do whatever we might like, but this is pretty sweet to have, again, the archive catalog of all of the work your team has done over time and seeing the growth for each of your clients, companies, and organizations. Now, you totally could have gone up to the the top here and just said, let me create a report or import one or whatever. And you could select a client from anything and do this all manually. But bear in mind, we had already done this when we added our engagement into the schedule. It has already created a report for us. So let me go ahead and search for that net exec report, and we can start to drill down into this. In the readout here, we could see everything that's added into the report narrative, like a summary of the details, hey, a findings overview, how many critical, high, medium, low, severity information findings there are. Now, what I'd like to do is cruise through a couple of the tabs up here just to show you everything that PlexTrack can do. The details, of course, is super simple. Hey, we can modify any of the settings, kind of the initial setup, wizard, and configuration we did to begin with. Maybe change the report name, change the status as you would like, or even choose any of the report templates as you export these out into any sort of design or layout. Back over in the narrative tab, the narrative is really where the meat of your pen test report comes to life. Hey, this is where you actually enter, type in, and actually add everything that's pertinent to discuss and describe and explain in your pen test report. The thing is, normally when you're putting together reports, oh, by hand and manually, well, you might copy paste stuff, hey, grab it from other reports that you've previously written, because a lot of those findings and discoveries tend to show up more often than once, right? So there's no sense repeating work, 
right? Hey, you could just be using maybe snippets or sort of modular plug and play components to build out your reports and even use like a templatized structure, right? And that is the idea with PlexTrack to help save you time. If you wanted to use just a pre-existing template, hey, we could just pull from one of those. Say a web app. Say, I don't know, the ISO 27000 audit. Internal network application, red teaming template, purple teaming, all this sweet stuff, in-house application pen test report. Let's do red team template. We can choose that, and now this is already filled out with all these awesome sections that we can just manipulate, tweak, and add to. Let me collapse this so we can see things a little bit better. But look at all these sort of variables with like two percent signs wrapped around things, like like team name or client name, client short name and report start date, etc., etc. You could just fill these in and manipulate these, but these, the special syntax wrapped in 2% signs, is what PlexTrack calls short code. They're literally variables for your report, which you could easily modify, manipulate, toggle, even set some global stuff. It's really cool to be able to use smart placeholders for things that, hey, stay the same across multiple pen test reports, but do differ and vary based off the client, organization, or engagement. Now we can make our changes here. Say our goal was to just simply gain domain admin access. And of course, you've got like a full-blown word processor editor here, right? You could, hey, change the heading. You could modify text format, bold, italic, underline, align things however you'd like, insert images, insert whatever you need. You know, given something with like gain domain admin access, maybe it's not fully pertinent for us to have to, hey, fill in all these other observations and goals, maybe for some small little playground and training environment that isn't super necessary. But take a look at everything that's already built out for you, like the scope, like the attack narrative, critical steps, etc., etc. That's just handy. And now when I get down to the bottom here, you can, of course, add your own custom section, do whatever you'd like. You can collapse, minimize, delete these as needed. Let me remove that. Or we can just click to add from the narratives database. Now this is the coolest thing. The narratives database alongside the write-ups database are really those archives, those catalogs, those things that you could pull back on for snippets, hey, pieces of text content that might not be related to one pen test, but would be in another. So you'd like to be able to have those in your back pocket. Say something for social engineering, maybe business impact, other appendices like, oh, informational findings, other observations, maybe tools that you use. We could just tag these on, add them in, and then add them to our report. Super sweet. Now the finding section is really where the magic kicks in though, because that's where you could add, oh, vulnerabilities, occurrences, observations, and findings that are worthy of being in the report. Let me move my face here, but you could see, oh, we could add a finding given anything that we might create manually or something that we've seen before in our write-ups database, maybe you could even import something and you can grab these from other tools in your toolkit, like Burp Suite, like Checkmarks, Core Impact, maybe Nessus, NetSparker, Nexpose, Nmap even, OWASP, Pantera, Qualys, Scythe is in here, that's awesome. It is worth saying, by the way, that PlexTrack has an awesome amount of integrations, so you can use this with plenty of other tools. We could go ahead and configure those if you'd like. Say you were working with Cobalt, EdgeScan, HackerOne, Jira working, Tickets maybe, Sneak is in here, oh, that's so cool. And I know that I just briefly mentioned the write-ups database alongside the narratives database, but this is where you can find all of those modular, like reusable plug-and-play snippets, things that you could just snap into your pen test report, maybe based off of CVEs, maybe all categorized by a specific repository, like things you could find from Burp Suite or common weaknesses and exposures, even CISA and their KEV, their known exploited vulnerabilities. We can explore and see those in just a second, and of course you can import and add all of your own, like from the MITRE ATT&CK framework if you wanted to. But anyway, if we were to just create a finding manually, this is where you could fill out, oh, what it is that you found, I don't know, SQL injection. You could build out whatever severity you might like or score. Again, this is probably why you'd want to use some of the write-up database and things that are from a real resource. Scrolling down, the status here is really cool because there are certain kind of states you might have a finding in, right? Look, maybe it's an observation, something that you see could be a potential impact or vulnerability and it's in progress, maybe you're working it, or you've closed it. Look, that's a valid and now proven impact and observation. They could have a sub-status, you could assign it to any other operator, you could fill out a description, etc., etc. Now, I won't drag you down the rabbit hole here, but say the affected asset section, this is really where you could add in new assets that you uncover that have a vulnerability or a finding. Say we could add an asset manually, maybe use some existing asset that we've seen previously in past tests, or even import one from like Nmap, an Nmap scan in 
a CSV format or anything else. Of course, you upload screenshots and videos. Of course, you can work with code samples here, all the sweet stuff pertinent to that finding. With that, assets automatically get filled out as you work through the report. You can see artifacts that might be present and even build out like a visual attack path. I'll show you that in a graph for another pen test report that's already written and not us just, hey, carving out of darkness here. But I did sprinkle in a little bit of mention of the priorities, and I'd love to showcase that a little bit more in their own dedicated section, because this is really cool. Hey, you can see the list out of things that actually need your attention and are important for getting the work done. Look, everything that we might have seen for other findings in other pen test reports and other engagements. And if you wanted to, you could simply create one of these. We could search for a client or you could see the description and all the tags included here. There's one for our net exec example. We can select that or we could even add it to others. Once we've chosen that report that we wanna make sure that's tied to, we can go ahead and select next. And then we can say, hey, what's the title on this? Are we still working it? All the status tags that you saw previously, the author, the owners, and then what we might want to add as a note here. A little bit of recommendations, a little bit of treatment. All of these are optional, but you do need to be able to put these all out. And with that, look, the priority actually has a scale and some calculations on what's the likelihood of this and what's the impact and how do these all play a part here. We can go ahead and save that. And with that, now we've got it added to a list of things we should keep working on. Now that we have that created, hey, we can see a little bit more of the details on that if we wanted to. And we know that that might be tagged to me. So in my dashboard, if I pivot back there, we see our reports that we're assigned to along with the priorities that we should clean up. Really good for team management as you're working across your whole pen testing shop, like Wiley Consultants, just as an example. And I mentioned all the content libraries previously between the narratives database, the write-ups database. Of course, we could explore, drill down into these and see, look, CVEs, that's like, 23,000, that's pretty cool. CWEs, and of course you can create your own repository and add these all in as you would like. I will say though, I have been saving one of the coolest features of PlexTrack and that is back in the pen test report section. Let me choose one that's not our net exec, but just like anything that might, I don't know, be a fine example of a report that's already started to be built out. This one's still in draft. Hey, Q4 2024 internal network assessment with our client Innovations Unlimited. You can see the readout there with now a little bit more details, but this is not quite yet done. We have a couple findings that are worth including, but if I actually go back to the narrative where we might be able to put some things in here, look, there are other sections that we should add. We've got our executive summary that we could fill out. And if I actually pivot back over to the findings, there are a couple that we'd like to maybe add a little bit more details into. Here's like dumping NTDS contents. So we could go ahead and click into that. Maybe we need a description here. So if I were to actually edit this in the findings details way down below, when I actually could supply a description here, there is an option that you might be able to see over here on the right to use AI. Now this is the coolest thing because literally as you're adding findings or maybe as you just see something that sounds or looks interesting, look, you could have your report write itself. That's one of the sweetest things about PlexTrack. Let me go ahead and click that use AI button. And now we'll see that it came to life with the penetration test revealed that an attacker was able to extract sensitive information from the domain control. Specifically, they were able to actually dump the contents of NTDS, the NT Domain Services Database, and obtain a list of domain hashes. And that's, that's, that's true, that's fact. So we'll go ahead, insert and replace. With that just generated for us, PlexTrack has auto saved this and we could keep cruising. Maybe go back to our findings. Hey, clean this up for some others if they're missing a description. The dumping of NTDS contents and domain hashes, I think it was a good example of like, okay, starting from nothing and then building out general recommendations and descriptions. But let's say we chose another one. Hey, Microsoft Windows SMB v1, signing is disabled. Let's say we edit this. Let's see if we can can tweak and tune that one by giving it a little bit more of, hey, something to start with, like, hey, simple install patches for the systems. And here, oh, typo, here are the advisories from Microsoft. Can AI just figure that out and put it in there? The system is vulnerable to a security issue related to Microsoft Windows SMB1 signing disabled. To address this vulnerability, it's recommended to install patches for the infected systems. Microsoft has issued advisories regarding this issue, which can be found on their website. 
Well, I would have loved for the links, but I can go track that down and we'll work together, AI. With that in mind, I would like to say, hey, you still gotta be the human in the loop for this, right? You can't just let AI write the whole report for it. You should be adding your own material, checking, validating, and letting AI work with you and, and help you. It should supplement your fast, efficient pen test report writing process. We have a couple other findings that we could kind of kick the tires on. This one has, oh, multiple foreign domain trust relationships, something you might just like right off the cuff, right? Super scrappy notes, but then you just let, hey, Plex AI, Plex tracks artificial intelligence, be able to cruise through this and it generates something much beefier and much better for your own formal report. That's looking good. Let me insert and replace. We've also got LDAP injection and command injection, and we don't need to really beat the dead horse here, but I'm curious, look, given the description that it already has, like something that, I don't know, just slammed together, could AI kind of clean that up, make it a little bit easier, more easy to consume and read? Yeah, that's not bad. That's much tighter. That's I think better to read through. Yeah. Now, ultimately with that all done, maybe the coolest part is like, you don't need to do that strictly for findings. Like you can use AI, the button is just about everywhere, even for any part of your narrative or whatever you're putting together in your report. So I've got nothing in my executive summary right now, but there's at least enough information based off of everything we've already written, the findings and all the things to include thus far. Could it just spit together our executive summary without us needing to even do anything? Cause that's pretty sweet. Oh, cybersecurity findings for innovations unlimited. Okay, we might tighten up the title a little bit, but we've still got some sweet details on who the partner is, who the client or customer is, and then a gist of everything here, the dates, the timeline for the test and engagement, and then everything that we track down based off of the findings. Oh, that's pretty sweet. I think that's cool, not gonna lie. Like that's better than a blank canvas and saves you the time from pulling together all those details and then, you know, polishing it all up. At least we've got something to start with. Insert and replace and look, now we've got a pen test report. Can I just export this? <laughs> but this includes the findings. Like this is a pen test report. I know small, I know simple, but look, you could keep adding to this, you could do whatever you want. But if we were to export this, Oh, whatever template we wanted. Look at all these. You can, of course, upload your own template, but maybe you've got multiple scopes. Maybe you've got a single scope for an external or internal test. Web apps, of course, ISO 27001. Let me do an internal, because that's what this was with the single scope. Let's export that and we'll see how it looks. I'm in a print preview right now to be able to see this as the full document in Microsoft Word, but this is looking pretty good. Hey, Q4 2024, internal network assessment, pen test report with the date, prepared for that partner, executive summary with everything that we've seen, recommendations all included, hey, breakdown of all the findings, critical, high, medium, low, a little bit more detail on all of that that you could fill out, cruise through, or let Plex AI cover that for you, super cool. And then each page drilling down into the detailed findings. Of course, you would have some screenshots in there, maybe some code samples, whatever you would do to add a little bit more to that pen test report. But at its core, look, this is covering what was seen. That speeds up your workflow. But that is not all that PlexTrack could do here. Look, I won't drill down into the run books, but that's an incredible way to continuously test, hey, different vulnerabilities, potential findings inside of an environment. Very, very cool to have that automated. I won't drag us down the rabbit hole on that, but I would love to showcase the analytics because this is pretty awesome. And that look, you can see everything that your shop has found, has seen over time, findings, vulnerabilities, all the tests that you may have performed for across all of your clients, customers, and organizations, or you want to drill down to any others. You can specify any filters you might like. You might be able to specify any clients that you're curious about. You could drill down to specific assets or any finding severities and being able to see all of this, get the visual, all the pretty graphs and charts, stuff, whatever it takes to, I don't know, show that to stakeholders, show that to leadership. That's all present and available for you. Let me close the side here so you can see that a little bit better, but it's just going to list out, hey, everything across all of your clients and customers. You can see each individual one as you went down and explore them. Or you could take a look at the assets. Maybe those findings, again, over time have been remediated. Hey, actually seeing the improvements, seeing the value coming from penetration testing. And you could see that change just as well on assets. Hey, the actual endpoint, the actual infrastructure, the 
IP addresses and hosts and everything, that is worthwhile. If you want the easy button to get some of that insight, the trends and SLAs section will tell you a little bit about, hey, how well people are actually patching, fixing, changing, and actually remediating what they might have seen from a pen test. And that is pretty cool, especially that you can say, hey, I can validate that and show it to you over time and see how you might have improved and how our partner relationship keeps working well together. That's a selling point right there. With all that said, now I hope you have seen some of the magic and the superpowers that you get with PlexTrack and just how easy it is and how fast and efficient it is to build a full fully formal, fleshed out, professional pen test report and be collaborating with your entire team all along the way. Hey, updating the status of the findings, seeing what's critical, what's high, what's medium, and what's a priority, when we're gonna actually be on engagement across the schedule, using artificial intelligence to help churn out narratives, descriptions, executive summaries, all the boilerplate stuff that you don't wanna have to write. And while you can still be reusing stuff from the narratives database, the write-ups database, everything, all the tools in the toolbox that PlexTrack gives you to seriously streamline your pen test writing process. Writing pen test reports is so much easier with PlexTrack. Thank you so much for watching this video. Thanks so much for, hey, letting me do some of that show and tell, letting me do the demo, letting me do the showcase to see just how sweet their platform really is. I'd love to know your thoughts. Let me know in the comments down below. Please do all those YouTube algorithm things, like, comment, subscribe, and I will see you in the next video.